Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 11. Yes, sirree. We are studying our way through the book of Leviticus, one chapter at a time. And chapter 11 is what's before us today. So if at all possible, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God out and join me there. Get something on which you can jot some notes at the end of our study time, I'll be giving you four words beginning with the letter D that will help you kind of highlight what's going on here in Leviticus chapter 11. If I were to give a title to the broadcast, it would be this, so what's for supper? So what's for supper? Now, there's a question that gets asked every day all over the world. What's for supper? And you'll quickly see why it's a fitting title for the chapter. I've got a gospel tract in my hand I want to share with you, but let me lead into the broadcast this way. Here's a name for you. The name is Dr. J. Wilbur Chapman. J. Wilbur Chapman. You probably don't know that name. He was a Presbyterian evangelist who died 100 years ago this year. He was a powerful man of God. Well, Dr. Chapman was once asked this question. Dr. Chapman, what's a good rule for living the Christian life? His answer was this, and I'm quoting now. This rule governs my life. Anything that dims my vision of Christ or takes away my taste for Bible study or cramps my prayer life or makes Christian work more difficult is wrong for me, and I must, as a Christian, turn away from it, end quote. Now, friend, having that kind of a rule may just explain why God could find him such a powerful servant for the gospel. You and I are living in a day when nobody likes to have rules placed upon them, especially by somebody else. Well, here in chapter 11 of Leviticus, God places some rules on the nation of Israel. Do you know why? Well, join me here and let's learn a new lesson about what's to like from Leviticus. Oh, friend, I mentioned that gospel tract in my hand. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. That really is the main thrust of the ministry here. This radio broadcast is the radio arm of Bible Tracts Incorporated. We publish gospel tracts in different languages and give them away. The one in my hand right now is entitled Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. Listen to a question that's actually asked in this gospel tract. It says this, If you would die today, would you go to heaven, or are you depending on a quote-unquote merry-go-round to get you there? How can somebody even contemplate thinking about a merry-go-round to get them to heaven? Well, this gospel track explains that a lot of people are on religious merry-go-rounds. The merry-go-round of good works, the merry-go-round of religion, the merry-go-round of being sincere, friend. There's only one way to get to heaven. A merry-go-round will take you nowhere, but you can have a lot of fun on it. But if the end result is hell and destruction, that's not a very good ride. Here's a great gospel tract to use with people who are religious and concerned about spiritual things, but don't know Christ as Savior, riding the religious merry-go-round. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you some ways by which we can send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts, including this one about the merry-go-round. 
please be ready with pen and paper. Contact us. You can go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org, and you can order the sample packet there. I've been saying in recent days that we are right now in the throes of trying to raise $22,000 to print 1.3 million tracks inside the country of Pakistan. The workers are ready there to give the tracks out. We just got to get them printed. Would you prayerfully consider helping us with this project? It would be a great help to the gospel and to the eternal lives of those who will receive the gospel through these tracts. Please pray about that. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Now go to the end of the chapter. Verse 45 says, For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall be therefore holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of every creeping thing that moveth in the waters, and every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. That ends the chapter. Now, I have divided the book of Leviticus up into four parts. Part one was chapters one through seven, titled, The Way to God, the way to God. But then part two is chapters eight through 15. Those chapters I titled the work of God, the work of God. And the last week in our study, we looked at chapters eight, nine, and 10. Those chapters deal with the consecration and separation of the priests for the work of God. Now, beginning at chapter 11, we're going to see the consecration and separation of the people of the Jews as a whole, again, for the work of God. We are about to get into a section of Leviticus where some of the strangest rules can be found, and they're laid out for the people. Chapter 11 is about what animals can and cannot be eaten by the Jews. In chapter 11, there's a section about land animals, a section about water creatures, a section about birds, and even about insects, all dealing with their diet. Let me be very blunt right up front here. These rules in chapter 11 were for the nation of Israel. They are not given to church-age saints. We all know that the law and keeping of the law was a burdensome thing for the Jews. It was like like a yoke on their necks, but These rules, they were God-ordained rules, and so keeping the rules was to be an act of faith, even though God gave no specific reasons for why some animals were clean and others were unclean. What we do know and what we can say pointedly is this. God's people in the Old Testament were to be able to distinguish between what was clean and what was unclean, even in things relating to their diet. Leviticus 11 has only two basic parts to it. Part 1 takes up verses 1 to 23. That part I've called distinctions between animals. And by animals, I'm referring to all creatures here, land, water, flying, and and those that are creep up on the ground. Part 2 of chapter 11 takes up verses 24 to 47. That section I've entitled, Defilement, because of the animals. Now, if you read that section, you're going to see that only a dead animal could defile a person. You see, death is an abnormal condition in the kingdom of God. When God created the world, there was no death. Sin had not entered the world. Death is an abnormal thing in the kingdom of God. Death brings pollution. And friend, without Christ as Savior, you and I are dead in our trespasses and sins. We're polluted. We cannot enter heaven. That's why Jesus Christ came to give us life. Well, earlier I read verses 45, 46, and 47. These verses give us the only stated reasons here as to why God gave these rules. 
What can we learn from these verses? I'm getting ready to give those four words beginning with the letter D. Get your paper out. The first is we learn is this. It's the word deliverance. In the word deliverance, in verse 45, we read these words. I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt. Here, God connects these rules on diet to the fact that the Jews had been delivered or they had been saved out of Egypt. So their salvation impacted even the food that they ate. Remember that. Their salvation impacted the food that they ate. Second lesson we learn is the word distinction. Distinction, still based upon verse 45. The Jews were to be a holy people, we're told there, because God was holy, they were to be holy. The word holy means to be separated for a special use. This section of God's people here in the Old Testament was to reflect that their food made them distinct, made them a distinct people from all other people. The third thing we learn concerns the word diet. That's my third D word, diet. Belonging to God impacts the ordinary aspects of their life there in the Old Testament. Well, earlier in our studies of here in Leviticus, I referred to a verse out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's verse 31. That verse says this, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all for the glory of God. This verse does not get the attention it really ought to be getting in our day and age by those who have been delivered from, by salvation from sin, death, and hell. My fourth D word and the fourth thing we learn is discernment. Discernment. God gave rules so the Old Testament Jews could discern between what was clean and what was unclean. Well, beloved, you and I in the New Testament era, we have been given the completed scriptures and we've been given the indwelling Holy Spirit so that you and I can discern what is clean and unclean for us in our lives in every aspect of life. Will all believers today agree on everything as it relates to how we ought to live and what's holy and what's unholy for one person and another? Will we all agree on this stuff? No, we will not. But you and I who desire to effectively reflect Christ before a lost world and then effectively share Christ to a lost world, we had better give thought. We had better give prayer time to our normal daily life practices, even the issue of what we take into our bodies. Why? Because we are different from those still lost in sin. We're to be holy. Our bodies are the temple, the worship place of God. If you're listening today and you think this is foolish, it may be because you do not know Christ as Savior and your body is not the temple of God. Friend, it's tragic that your body's not a temple of God, but what's even worse is that your soul and spirit are still dead in trespasses and sin. You need a Savior. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross to save you from your sin. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.